And the two simple learning is this. People quit insurance only because of two reasons. It's never about the market. It's never about the product. It's never even about the company. Then what are the two reasons? First, it's usually related to the communication breakdown within the agency. And second, they hated themselves being an insurance agent. Okay? So in psychology, we call that there is always a constant struggle with self-identity. There is no struggle with ability to do well. So we need to separate the difference between vacations and passion. Vacation is what you are very professionally trained well to do something. Like, oh, I am a nursery school teacher. But don't think that just because the person is a nursery school teacher, the person loves children. Maybe the person just got no choice. Eh? Okay, la, no choice. La. If I don't do this, I cannot be earning the kind of income they want to earn. So they are like so good doing their job. But that's just a vacation. They hate the kids. If murder is not a crime, they would have killed a few children because they are so noisy. So that's when we realize that a lot of agents are doing well from the outside and what is missing is they need to do well from the inside. And actually, doing well in insurance is a sport, right? And uh, we can choose to be in a school game, we can choose to be in a C game, Commonwealth game that's going to happen in a few days time, or we can choose to be in the Olympic. It's never about capability, it's about the decision you make, how big you want it to be. And then when you decided on this is what you want to have, then you come back to this thing called the mindset. Because the mindset determines the kind of work ethics. That means your determination. It is the discipline that gets you there. We need to work on the discipline. And discipline is difficult because of what? Stamina. So skill can make it easier for us to do something, but stamina helps us to get it done. There is a difference. Like having a good car can make me drive in a comfort, but I need the petrol to get me to where I need to go. Having a very good car without enough petrol will not get me there. Having a lousy car that vibrates, but I have enough petrol, I will be there. So see that different and start understanding why mindset is important. Win itself already show you that's what life is about. Would you agree that life will always be up and down? So the first rule is if you want to win, you're going to have the W right through the low season. Who cannot come to agency and talk to clients when they are already making all the money and all the success? They will love it to have 48 hours a day because they are winning, right? But the challenge in this business to have a winning mindset is ask ourselves, are we in for a long term? If we're in for the long term, forget about the sugar-coated moment. Because even an untrained person, a person that has no discipline, if the person is winning by even close case, the person no need any motivation, no need any stamina, no need any work ethics. Because winning itself is already a happy chemical that's creating the move forward. So if we understood that that is what life is about, if you have never experienced a fall, you do not know what is a rise, then one of the winning we can see here is what? That we need to ride through the ups and downs. So the first rule I'll call myself in terms of winning mindset will be, if I want to win, I must prepare to lose. If I don't lose, I don't win. If I want to win big, I lose big. Because it is not the losing that I need to be focused on, it's the learning that I haven't reached my winning that I will be focusing on. So that is the first rule. Then, what it does mean is that you've got to have a picture of yourself that no one can decide for you. And that is that line here. If regardless of how the market is going, you stay undisturbed. Once again, it is easy to tell people I pick the right career, I pick the right company, I pick the right team when we are winning. But it's very difficult when we are losing. So the biggest part of loser is never about what failure have done to them, but what they have stopped trying after they believe that it's not going to work. So it come back to earlier, I was saying I had the privilege of coaching people. Some of them, they were top of table, caught of table. Uh, some were MDRT lifetime. One of the things I I realized is that in addition to the breakdown in the agency is the part about earlier I shared with you the self-identity so when they are doing well actually it's easier for them to give up why because they say things like last time I'm so good now why I'm like that so when we are locked in the previous success we are preparing for the next failure and that is why part of the winning company allow ourselves to say to win I must prepare to lose because we will never lose unless we what we stop 
We don't lose until you stop. That is the beautiful part of it. And therefore, you can see that it's all about market wave. So win is really all about understanding that winning means it's not going to be a smooth journey. So then how do we create a powerful mind? If we know that I want to have a winning formula. Now, we got to then look back at what industry are we in? Right? What industry are we in? So if we understood the meaning behind what we do, it's always easier to say I want to win no matter how. If we do not understood the game, then we will say I hope I win. If you understood the rule of the game, then you will pick the way you want to play the game. For example, I can't jump, I have small hands, I don't think I'll play basketball. I don't think I'll play basketball, but that doesn't mean I'm not a sport person. No, it means I've got to pick another sport. I've got to pick another one. So I had the privilege of uh, joining a uh, rugby team in school, uh, where I belong to one of those boys' school that did very well, and I experienced what is it like being in the champion team. So pick not just the game, but pick your winning strategy. Right? So when I was being selected to be representing the rugby team when I was 14 years old and won the national champion, I didn't pick myself to be, it was rugby game, so I didn't pick myself to be the, the hero of the game where you know the person gets to get the ball and uh, touch down. I picked myself to be the in center. That means creating the chance to pass the ball so that the fast runner can win. And I love that metaphor because then at a very young age, I already decided that sometimes to win, I am not the one who needs to seal up, but I need to be the one as part of the success. And the winning mindset allows us to know that there will always be some games that we will lose, there will always be some games that we will win. And if you can ride through those moments that you didn't win, you win bigger than those moments that you win. Because it shows that you understood the art of winning, need losing, and need other people to win to be part of the championship. So that is the mindset. So coming back to looking at our business, what is it that we are doing? Then we say, oh, very simple. Look at average Singaporean or any human being when they wake up, what are they thinking of? They're thinking of money. <laughs> yeah, right? We're also thinking about income. <coughs> and so if we look at it and we say, yeah, okay, insurance plan is here to help you, which today we don't need to talk about, for example, uh, why is it good to be insurance? We don't need to talk about uh, which product we have in our company that is powerful. We have other sessions for that. But if we're just looking at winning mindset, then we got to be bigger than this. And here is how I suggest we can look at differently. First, we need to understand that clients are focusing on what? Money, income. And income can only be created when they are healthy to work, isn't it? So is our job just helping them to find a secure job, a job that pay well? Yes, we can. But we have something more divine than that. Normal people, it's just hoping that they have money, income. Each of us here, we have the power to help people to have what? Not just income, but money come in. And that is exactly the difference that we are making to people's life. That is the mindset we're going to be ahead of our client. They look at the commitment of an insurance plan as if I spend $2,000 on this, I don't have enough money to pay for my other expenses. It is a natural reaction to a product that is not created to give you instant gratification. There will always be more poor people queuing up for the new phone, new car, than people queuing up for a new policy. We've got to understand that that is nothing to do with people being lazy, people being irresponsible, people being scared. It's just got to do with the programming that when we grow up, Nobody really tell us what is other things that we can redesign. We choose to believe that if I'm rich, then I have a lot of power to do a lot of things. So insurance is one of the miracle product that changes that kind of possibility by telling you, if you are not born super rich, I cannot bluff you that you will become a millionaire. But my job is not to make every every Singaporean become a millionaire. My job is to make sure that while you are still healthy, you're thinking about money income, I need to create a plan for you that can help you in case you fall sick and definitely you will grow old. And that's when my job is to help you to have the money come in. And that is actually more powerful than the income that you have. Because the income that you have, you've got to work for it. When you have a great plan, when you have a great advisor, when you have a great solution, 
you are solving people's problems without them telling you that they have the problem. And that is the kind of winning mindset whereby you no longer struggle with, okay, uh, how, am I to, how am I going to close big case? Because actually big is a concept. Eh? You know, if you have a friend who is a Thai Thai and she used LV bag to go to the market and she put the live chicken inside the LV bag, eh? Because to her level, that is an NTUC plastic bag. But to another person that has never experienced proper shelter, proper education, and you, you just bought, let's say, uh, some clothing and then there's a paper bag and you just give it to the person, hey, that is an LV bag to that person. So we cannot use our standard to judge what people need. And that works both ways. Like. That means uh, we cannot say, uh, how am I going to close big policy because it's so expensive. Expensive compared to who? Compared to ourselves. And we cannot stop closing small policy just because they are small for us because it could be a big thing for the person for the first time in their life. They have a chance to transfer their love to a policy that can leave behind for the family. And that's why the winning mindset not just involve how can I show people that within three months I can become the top of the table. That can always be a motivation forward, but that cannot be the reason forward. And that is really a winning mindset. And why is it that closing big case cannot be the reason forward? When the measurement becomes the target, then it's no longer a good measurement. Then we lose it. We forgot that we're going out there to help people that money come in. We are all about ourselves. Oh yeah, last one I managed to close it, this one I didn't. So I'm not saying here that we're doing philanthropy work. Huh? Namaste and don't care about money. We are in for the money. If we are good people and we know there are better ways to spend money, we must have more money. But we cannot lose that the real purpose is not just having more money. The real purpose should be understanding what industry you are in. And this is one suggestion that if you want to have a winning mindset, look at the industry and don't care about what other people think because this industry is not for everybody. It looks so simple to come in, right? But it's not for everybody. So we must first congratulate ourselves to have the winning mindset that say, I want to be in the industry. And it may not be forever, but for the fact that you dare to step inside, you're already illustrating the winning mindset, right? So understanding our industry create that. Then watch over your voices, right? It is so easy to tell ourselves that uh, I want to win and I'm not there yet. And why is our brain telling us that? Because we only focus on two simple things in life. Did we win or did we lose, right? Win or lose. And that's how our brain is being programmed. We are very simple people. We, we just say, uh, did I win or not? Did I close case or not? Uh, did I achieve my target or not? So either we win or we lose. And since it's a concept, means we get to rewrite it. We are the programmer of our brain. So either we win or we learn. How come we're not winning yet? So I never say that uh, just because we have a winning mindset, everything else will fall nicely. Uh, for example, I speak to myself. I say just because I came with more than 25 years of insurance and banking experience, when I join this business, I'm going to be like ahead of every one of you. No, you're still going to get the same difficulty from someone that just graduated from Polytechnic. In fact, it's going to be worse because you're going to suffer from your own ego, your own previous success, and your technical knowledge that become what? You start to get stuck in a certain kind of belief that I deserve to be easier in the way I do my things compared to people who are not experienced. And so if I were to speak to myself, then my winning mindset will be the experience only got me this far to be part of the team. I need to build new experience that is relevant to the choice of coming in and create. So what would then make me want to do well? My internal motivation. So that I came up with my own tech knife to say coming in around 50 years old means that I want to use my retirement to help people with their retirement. And that instantly locked me up to say that I'm not just doing it for myself. I need to have that team belief because the team is so important to me since young. T-E-A-M, right? Together, everyone achieve more. And that is a winning mindset. 
A real leader is someone that can follow. And if you are a follower, you are really a leader. And that is really a kind of mindset that we want to envision. Right? I'm shifting the camera angle now from the mindset back to actually what kind of business are we in? Because if we don't understand the business we're in, it's very hard to have a strong mm -hmm. mindset. Our mind is so clever that if it's not worth it, I'm not going to have a mindset. If, like, if you're not going to be a worth it lover for me, I'm not going to truly love you. Human is so smart that they know exactly what to do because we are designed to be lazy. We are always in the optimum level. Those of you who do body weight lifting, you know what I mean. You can tone up your muscles, but for three months, you do nothing about it, it will start to tear down the muscle. Why? Because our body is constantly searching for the shortest path to maintain what it needs to function. We're not just doing it for the money. Of course, without money, very hard to do it. But we're also doing it to build something that on the day that we die, not if we die, eh, death is a certain, the earlier we embrace it, the less we should be sad about. So the day we die, what are some of the things that you'll be proud of? Not so much about the awards that we go on the stage to receive, not so much about the money that gives us the best quality of life, but the meaning behind existence. And I think there are many industries that can allow us to do that. And definitely, what we are doing today for our clients is definitely also a way to do that. What is it about our industry that we can have a strong mindset? So I'm going to share with you something that I've created for the last six, seven years when I have my personal clients that use it. And uh, one of them achieved call a table last year in Malaysia and she used it in the uh, MDRT seminar platform speaking, which I personally trained her on. And this is the tagline I want to share with you. Okay, it goes like this. People will not wake up to buy insurance. People buy insurance because they know they may not wake up. That has to be the super mindset because if we expect that we're selling insurance and we're getting a popularity like launching an iPhone, uh, you got it on the wrong side. Because if you sell a commodity like iPhone where people can hold and use, people can come back to you and say thank you, right? And if we are in insurance, you're hoping that your most satisfied customers uh, will say thank you to you. Uh. That means uh, cheat gate is very busy for you. Uh. Because they will go, oh, thank you, oh, really works. Uh. Now my wife wants to marry another man. Oh. You want to have, receive the kind of call? So obviously we need to know that we are not here to receive the open gratitude from clients that truly benefit it. But we must use the eyes from within to know that we have served the client well. So always just remember this in the super mindset. Accept the fact that people hated us. Accept it. Who are the people that love to talk to us? People that are already diagnosed with critical illness. If we are only selling to people that want to buy from us, why don't we just go to the hospital? We couldn't, right? If someone diagnosed with a illness and need to go for operation that costs 600,000, even if the person is unconscious, huh, you know what the family member will do? They will try to open up the mouth, shove the marker in, and move the head to sign on the policy, right? Because it's going to save the family 600,000. So having a super mindset, a super winning mindset means that we already accept that we are in an industry where the people that need it will not tell you and welcome you. And the people that really, that you want to sell to, are the people that will reject you. So it's a very strange business. And therefore, don't look for the obvious rejection. Look for the things that they didn't say. For example, common objection, I don't like insurance. I'm sure we all learned how to overcome the objection. Nobody is talking about insurance, we can call you whatever you want. Right? Then, what is the purpose of buying something I don't like? You don't have to like it. Then you say, what's the use of having a lot of money where I die means I die already or my family member got more money for what? Look, no matter how much money we have from insurance when someone passes away, it's not going to replace the loss of a loved one. But it's going to make it easier because then they don't have to deal with the financial loss 
when the person is gone. So we can do what? Reduce the suffering. We can reduce the financial suffering. So it would be so naive to think that oh, insurance is going to create happiness because if someone dies, it's okay with their money. When a family member is gone, there's no amount of money that can replace the person. But it will be double loss if because of that sudden missing of the person who happened to be a breadwinner. Then now the mom has to be the father or is in the case of a female that is gone, then the father has to be the mom. And I think that is the part that we have to understood. So when you find meaning in what you do, then we know that this is an industry where you will be most understood, most misunderstood by people. Because people that truly benefit will not give us the phone call. Once you accept that, to me, that is the winning mindset. The winning mindset that understood that we are different from other people. And that's why we enjoy the privilege that other people don't have. The kind of freedom in designing our work, the kind of sitting down and have the ability to close case while it really looks like a casual meetup. Right? So coming back to this word called win. Now, you can see that sandwich between W and N, there is an I. And therefore, winning seems to be very egoistic of this is an I, me, myself. But winning need not to be have that because we can add three pillars to the I to make it even more powerful. And that is, it is the power of we. Right? So to illustrate this clearer, when we are always alone in this business, we build up a kind of mental, toxic and mental stress. What I personally call it, there is a illness. How do we cure the illness? People say cure the illness, quit the industry. Ah. You cannot cure the illness by quitting the industry because you will have the same kind of illness from whatever industry that you choose as long as you want to do well in life. Just like if you, do, if you, want, to, if you want to graduate from university, then you need to take an exam. Right? Unless you say, I don't want to be a graduate, then I don't need to take the exam, right? So the moment you want to do, life, do well in life, you always have the difficulty. And a lot of people build up illness. And I discovered one thing for the last six, seven years, coaching people that are very successful in insurance. And that is, when you have the power of we, then you instantly get the wellness that you need, the vitality that you need. And that's why coming together here again in this mid-year review, it's not so much about going through the motion because yeah, there's this gap analysis, but it's about remembering that if we do not have a feeling for people, then we'll not do well. Even when we do well from the outside, we'll not do well from the inside. And it also means another thing, if we have not been able to do well from the outside yet, it doesn't mean that we're doing all the wrong thing. It just means that we need to figure out what is stopping the thing that we did right to be translated into the outcome that we are looking for. Just like some people, they are building the app muscle. They can build for a few months. Huh? You can still see that it's not up yet. But it doesn't mean that inside is not building up. It just means that the layer of fat is still very thick. So they still need to clear the the layer of fats, right? But it doesn't mean that the crunches they did was meaningless because it's already built up in muscles. So in this industry, no one will pity us if we quit. They expect us to quit. But we need to save ourselves. We, don't, we cannot wait for another person to save ourselves. So to me, a team will be a group of people decided to save themselves coming in. Not someone coming in and hope the team can save that person. A strong team is a co combination of strong individual in the team. Just like a great company is a company of great people. It is not like the company is great, I'm going to join this great company. No. So if we come in here today and we decided to be the best version of ourselves, we are already winning. Because one of the things about winning is prepare to lose. And then when you lose, don't give up. Because it is through the losing that you have your most learning. So in life, either you win or you learn. And that is really something that I want to share with you. And thanks for your attention. And uh, I hope I didn't take up too much of 
要看。